folks. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about Redux Persist. So let's get into it. So basically, I had a question from one of my videos regarding persisting Redux state and how you could do that. And I mean, there are more ways, uh, I suppose, than doing it this way. But I think that this is a package worth you, worth for you to it's something that you should have with you I think it's a very useful tool to have in your toolbox and so the package is redux persist which is a fairly well established package to add to your repertoire if you're doing react development with redux now the reason why I think this is such a useful package is well of course like the the essence of what it does is that it allows you pers to persist the state of redux when you're working with an application so let's take a look at my little sample application here let's um, I can actually walk you through the code first so I have this tiny little express server here that's just being served off on port 3000 I could probably not even need this because that's that's one of the beautiful parts about using this and then I have this little rendered or like this view that I serve up with some HTML and here is my main application so here you can see here that we're using react react DOM react router DOM and then we're using redux and then we have a bunch of components and then we have our little store here and then we have this thing here which is the persist gate which is where redux persist is actually hooked into our code so if we look at my foo component it's just a little well it's an h1 with a link basically and then we have my bar component that has a form it's the simplest form that i can make here but as you can see here i'm not really I'm not really using more than the stack. I'm using my uh, use selector hook here to grab uh, grab out the application state, and then I simply populate all of the values in my little form here with well with the state basically, and then I have my little end screen here. So that's pretty much it. And then well, there's a bunch of CSS and stuff here, but it's not super important like some basic styles. That's pretty much what we're doing. And then we have the store where basically all I'm doing here is that I have this one single event that I send that is called an update form that takes some payload. I've kept this as simple as possible because I don't want to get into the types and like all of this stuff. And then all it does is that it takes an action and sets the value. Whatever value I send with the uh, in the payload is going to be set on the state. And then we have my combined reducer in order to reduce and create the reducer for um, for Redux. And then we have my persist config here, where I've just kept it as simple as possible. This is the Redux um, configuration, where I then create my persistent reducer, and uh, which is an interface exposed by Redux persist. And then all I have to do is to call create store with my persisted reducer, and this is just me to get the re to get the Redux dev tools working. There are other ways to do this as well, and we're gonna see in that in just a moment. And then finally, I create my persister, which is just it's consumed by the persist gate. Now, what all this boils down to, all this formality, is that I can do this. So I can create a foo bar, and then I can select the gender here, and I can add some some stuff like that, and then I can go to my checkout page. and didn't like didn't have to do more than that, and then I can go back, and then you can see here that I still have the state, and I can refresh this as many times as I want. I can do even hard refreshes; it doesn't really matter. The reason why this works is because Redux Persist helps me with something. Uh, I can first show you my little Redux state here. So as you can see here, when I actually I set the value here, uh, let's move that down there. So you can see here that I'm actually firing off the event. And as you can see here, the diff shows me that I'm actually writing out things. I can just bar. And you'll see here that, yeah, it actually sets the state to bar. Now, what's cool about that, so my state here, is the app state but then i also have my persist state which is this is you, know, you can go to the documentation and look uh, look this up if you want to because you can have multiple versions of the state as well which is another thing the thing that is kind of cool with this is that if you go to the application tab 
you'll see here that there are under local storage there is a key which is persist root and there's a value there and if you have a look at that you'll see here that a hey, here is actually the state that I persisted and that is the thing that Redux persist actually does for us it uses it le it leverages local storage in order for us to save a local instance of the Redux state. Now, this is of course, it's it's very useful uh, in a run, I mean, you can use this in a production application, of course, and it is going to be useful because uh, if you wanted to do some caching, for example, let's say that you have a really big state and you don't want to do a lot of network calls in order to get the state again if the user refreshes the page, you could use Redux Persist for that. Uh, I will warn you a little bit. Uh, there is a rule that we where we say that there's uh, only two things that are hard in programming: naming and caching, and that is uh, really damn true. Caching is a is it's a it's a it's a hard thing. So let's. But, but even if you were not to use Redux Persist, Redux Persist in a production code base, I think that you should very seriously con consider it for demo purposes. The reason why I really like Redux Persist as a tool in my toolbox is whenever I need to create a proof of concept or I need to create a UI or something like that where I don't really need a database. I don't really need a server really. If you think about it, I, because this actually happened to me not that long ago. So I had a friend who asked me about helping out on a project and he said well I have these uh, these guys who want me to build like some type of proof of concept for their system and uh, they just really want the UI and they want like an experience something to play around with so they can kind of feel things out because usually when you're working uh, you can do things in segments if you're a little bit naive you you try to build the whole system immediately but if you take an iterative approach, you usually find that it's quicker for you, where you build something small that you can give people and then they can play around with it and get some feedback. And then you can iterate again and then again and then again and improve it. But if you try to build the whole thing from scratch immediately, it's really like a, there's only so much you can build before someone needs to play around with the thing that you made to get the next set of feedback. And this is where I think Redux Persist is really beautiful because what he, he said to me, well, Frederick, I'm thinking, I'm gonna use a Redux, uh, I'm gonna use a React, I'm gonna use Redux, and I'm gonna build this thing here, and then I'm gonna use like a Node backend, and then I'm probably gonna use a MongoDB database, like a mean stack thing, and then I'm probably gonna put that on some type of Heroku box or EC2 instance or something like that. And I said, do, do, do. Have you thought about just skipping all the backend stuff? And he goes, "What do you mean?" Well, because the thing is, like, all your stakeholders, like, they just want to play around with the application, right? They're not using, they don't have any user accounts or anything like that. It's basically just a demo app. It's something that they can use to just get the user experience right, so that they can see if there's more stuff that they need to add, or features they haven't thought about. And he goes, "Yeah. So why not use Redux Persist and just React? Because uh, with Redux." Because if you use Redux Persist, the experience, because the thing you don't want is if they build, like they play around with the application and they build up all the state with like adding products or adding events and stuff like that, you don't want them to feel like they have to start from scratch every single time they want to do something. But it's not really important that they all have the same data because that's the thing with the database, right? If you use the database, it's the full uh, system, but you can skip all that. Because that's not important. You just want them to be able to create a state and then get that state again when they go and visit the page. And this is a perfect use case for Redux Persist. I think it's beautiful. It is like this is why it's one of my favorite libraries. Because when I'm not concerned with creating like the back end code or anything like that, all I really have to do is to have the front end code add Redux Persist to it. And then I can simply store all the state that the user is creating on the client, like in their own browser. And then when they've had their say and they give me more feedback, we will continue working until such a point where they actually want the data that they are creating in their own browser to be visible in all the other browsers as well. So what I want you to take away from this is that I think that you should check out Redux Persist. Uh, e even if you don't use it in production code, you can use it, of course, in production code. It's fully capable of doing that. It's a very useful tool to know about if you're dealing with demo applications or you want to do a proof of concept or something like that, where 
the focus is more on the user experience and the UI. And that way you don't have to build, like hook up a database and do all that backend work. You just need Redux and Redux Persist. And then the user can sit there and play around and create their own state locally. And I mean, if I wanted to clear my state, it is as easy as me just removing that key there, starting over and hey, I have a clean slate and now I can play around with it again. And as you can see here, it immediately empties the application state and builds the whole thing up again. So look, check out this uh, library. I think it's going to be a very useful tool for you in your toolbox. Have a great day.